This is a video of how to set up the MAR 36B V-style gauge for measuring IDs. First you're going to need a 964 Allen wrench. First thing to do is to take off the tension in the back with this knob. Turn it a few turns to release the tension. If you're going to do this in a different position this thing articulates up, pick a position and set it in that position. If you move it, you should set it again. There's a pantograph or a reed spring in here that that this moves on. First thing we need to do is, is adjust the spring, or adjust the tension here or on the back so that this locking arm, when you move it into lock in the groove here, in this groove under here, if this doesn't move, it should just move in freely. So at the moment you can see it moves up. So we need to adjust our tension. And if you look carefully, it, it will move while you do this. You can see it on the display. That's good enough. Okay, so you lock it. Now you need to look at your, at your movable jaw here, which is locked down at the moment. There's a scribed line on the side, on, on both sides. You need to line it up to the center of the scribed line on the table. So we take our Allen wrench and we loosen this up. We come down and we eyeball it in place. Check the other side. Tighten it down. Now, the next thing we do is we need to adjust the stationary jaws. So you want to move them in smaller than the ID you want to measure. You want to take your, your master ring or master part, whatever it is you're going to set the gauge with, and set it down on the pads. Bring it up against so that this pin contacts, in this case, the ID. Then you're going to slide these up so that these two pins also meet the ID, but it's important that as you do, that the position of these two is equal. And, you know, if you drew a line tangent to both of these, it would be perpendicular to the side. So you can't have one up here and one down here as an exaggeration. They need to be equal. So one of the things you can use to look to judge that is... The, the, the line down the side of the jaw and the graduations here. Make sure the graduations match up as closely as you can eyeball them. It's important to the linearity of the gauge. This is not easy to do. Sometimes it helps to look through the ring, sometimes it helps to look in from the side. When you get it to a place that you like it, very carefully lift the ring off and then very carefully lock down your jaw without moving it on the T-slot. I like to just snug them up and then give them a, you know, another 15-20 degree turn. Okay, now when you put your master ring back on, it should go on, but it should be tight. It should be a snug fit. The next thing you need to do take your ring off and let go, uh, unlock the gauge. Now, 
then back on the back with the tension adjust. You want to look at where it is as far as the words go and increase the tension three revolutions. One, two, three. Now, as you notice, the gauge moved about 40 thousandths. So that means there's about 40 thousandths of spring pressure on the part. So when we put the, the master back on, it won't go on the pins anymore. We lift up with the handles to move it, to move the movable jaw so that it seats. Now we can preset our gauge. It's pretty close to where it was before. And when we rotate our master, reads zero. The other thing important to note is that this gauge has to be used with a calculating indicator. This gauge on the plate it has five-fourths ratio so the calculation in this gauge is set the A value is set to 0.8 or four-fifths. The relationship of the V's makes it necessary to do that because you don't have a true across uh, the diameter calculation or uh, measurement. So it's just a good idea to put your master on once or twice just to make sure, you can flip it over if you have a cylindrical master, just to make sure that everything's reading nicely. Uh, if you're not getting repeatability, turn the back knob half turn at a time to increase the spring pressure, that will that will give you more spring pressure here. You've noticed now, after we've made that adjustment, the lines on the side of the movable jaw are now away from center to the lines on the table. That's where you picked up your spring pressure. So that works pretty well. Now, with our gauge preset, we can take this ring is 20 thousandths and 5 tenths larger than the other one. And it's measuring 20 thousandths and 3 tenths. Kind of went on a little hard. I may want to increase my spring pressure because, you know, the spring pressure is important because it, that spring pressure centralizes your part around the three pins. Depending on the weight of your part, you may need more spring pressure. Depending on the thin-walled nature of your part, you may need less spring pressure to prevent distorting the part during the measurement. So let's give it another half turn. We always want to start with our setting master first because we changed something. Make sure. And this could just as easily be a preset value to the actual diameter. I'm just zeroing the gauge. Let me be a little run out in this ring. It's not really a new ring. Twenty thousand, two or three tenths. So this this ring may not be exactly. Now the gauge is set for storage and transport. We can always move this back with with, with hand pressure to lock out uh, the spindle movement. And you want to protect that spring if you're going to move it. So that, that's a good thing to do.